Hey folks, in this video we're going to be looking at setting up NeoVim for doing development with the Gleam programming language. Now, Gleam is a statically typed programming language that compiles to the Erlang virtual machine. NeoVim is a fork of Vim, and Vim is an attempt to improve the original VI editor that came as part of the POSIX standard on Unix systems. Vim is a surprisingly popular uh, text editor considering it has an unintuitive interface for beginners but if you look at the 2019 Stack Overflow survey you'll see that 25% of developers that you responded uh, like using Vim. Vim was first released in 1991. NeoVim is a fork that happened in 2015. NeoVim started because the original Vim project was being developed quite slowly for a while and there are a number of developers that were really keen to see some more modern functionality being built into Vim. The NeoVim project has a number of goals which are well outlined on their website, which is just neovim.io. I've been using Vim for about 15 years now, and I switched to NeoVim about two or three years ago because I was really excited about what the project was bringing to the Vim ecosystem. In this video, we're going to look at starting with a fresh NeoVim setup, adding configuration files, adding a plugin manager, and finally adding plugins that help us with doing development in Gleam. Okay, I'm going to start with a fresh install of NeoVim. If you haven't installed it yourself yet, you can do so from the GitHub page. In particular, if you click on the Releases tab here and scroll past this pre-release entry down to the latest release entry, you'll see a number of ways of installing it here. Personally, I use Linux, and so I use the App Image option here, which works fine for me. But you can see the other major platforms here, along with a bunch of options listed for different package managers if you click through on this link. With this fresh install, if we load up a Gleam file, we can see that there's no syntax highlighting. This seems like the first thing to fix. In order to get syntax highlighting, we're going to want to install the Gleam.vim plugin. And the best way to install plugins is to use a plugin manager. Vim and NeoVim include some basic plugin management functionality built into the text editor itself, but I personally still use a plugin manager on top of that that provides extra functionality. The plugin manager that I use is called Vim Plug, and we can see the GitHub page for it here. Now, unfortunately, we can't use the plugin manager to install the plugin manager itself, so we have to go through the tedious install instructions, but after this, it gets easier. To install Vim Plug, we can follow the instructions down here, which includes a curl line or other platform specific commands, but I'm going to show you the more old school way and just download the file itself. If we click on the plug.vim file here, and then click through on the raw option when it appears, we see the raw vim code for the plugin manager itself. We can now click save as, save this plug.vim file somewhere, and then copy it into place. In order to copy it into place, we need to make our config neovim directory first. You can see it coming up in my autocomplete. This is a difference between NeoVim and Vim. So Vim stores its configuration files directly in the home directory. NeoVim uses this .config directory instead. In order to install the Vim plug plugin manager, we need to create this directory here and then copy that file that we've downloaded into that directory. Once we've done that, we're ready to start configuring our NeoVim setup and specifying the plugins that we want to load. In order to do this, we edit a file called init.vim within that config nvim directory. So to load that up in NeoVim, we would do this. Here we can follow the instructions from the vim plug readme and add the lines required to initialize the vim plug plugin manager. If we go and check out that readme, we can see an example configuration further down in which they use this plug begin call and plug end to bracket the plugins that they want to load. So we can start off by adding those two lines into our config. So we've got call plug begin and call plug end. I've removed the argument we're passing to plug begin because it actually defaults to a reasonable value. Now we can see from the readme here that each plugin is being installed with a single line. Some of the lines include extra configuration, but mostly they include just a basic reference to what in fact turns out to be a GitHub URL, a fragment of a GitHub URL. That's the most common configuration. So if we want to install the gleam.vim plugin, we need to go and find where that lives on GitHub. 
as it is I have it up here in a separate tab and we can see that it lives at github.com gleamlang slash gleam.vim so it's this last segment of the URL that we're going to take for our configuration this gleamlang slash gleam.vim if we copy that and take it over to our config file and add it as a line here we all have added the gleam plugin to our config be careful to use single quotes here as double quotes are treated as comments in vim script with that line in our config we can save close and reopen neovim so that it loads that configuration properly once it's loaded we can run plug install in order to install the plugin that we've configured with this installed we should now be able to restart NeoVim one more time and it should have the Gleam plugin correctly installed and it should apply syntax highlighting to our Gleam file as we want. Excellent, seems to be working. The Gleam.Vim plugin also helps Vim to understand the output of the Gleam compiler. This means you can run the Gleam compiler from within Vim and Vim will read the error output and take you to the right line and column for the error. If I introduce an error, for example making a typo in a variable name down here, and then run make build again, you can see that it's displaying the error here, and if I dismiss the error, it's already taken my cursor to this variable that's incorrect, and I can fix it easily. This functionality involves a somewhat esoteric error format configuration in Vim and it can break quite easily if the compiler output changes. So we might be trying to work on making this a little more robust in the future if we can. I actually had to fix it to make this video to begin with based on recent changes that have happened in the compiler. To make this a little easier so I don't have to type out make build every time I want to compile, we can make a key binding to run that command for us. I'll do it in this session to begin with and then we can add it into our config file so that it's available every time we run Vim. So the key binding in this case is going to be one that I have generally ended up using for some reason and this is going to be mapping comma and then m to run this command for us. In this case we want the key sequence of comma and m to run colon make build and then a carriage return so like an enter to run the command itself. So if I enter that to make the key binding and then do comma m we can see that it runs this for us. And again, if I introduce this basic mistake and run it again, it will take us to the right place. If we want this key binding to be available every time we're editing a Gleam file, we can add it to our Gleam's FT plugin configuration. FT plugin relates to file type plugins, which means bits of code in your Vim configuration that only run for particular file types. The main Gleam.Vim plugin that we've installed relies on this kind of functionality but we can also add our own FT plugin files to our own configuration that run with custom configuration just for us rather than a shared plugin that everyone's expecting to use. So in this case we would create this FT plugin folder that we want so if we exit Vim and we would create in our config directory an FT plugin folder and then within that folder we're going to create a file called gleam.vim In this file we can add that key binding again. So if we do map comma m make build carriage return and save that when we open our file main.gleam and run comma m it runs that command for us as we expect. So the final thing we're going to look at is automatic formatting in Vim. A recent release of Gleam introduced Gleam Format, which will automatically format Gleam files for you. For those who aren't used to it, having a tightly integrated auto formatter whilst coding is a fantastic part of the development process. It was popularized by Go, I guess, GoFont. I've used it a lot with Elm, that has the Elm Format project. And if you're in the JavaScript world, you might be familiar with Prettier. Generally speaking, integrating these tools into your text editor so that they're formatting your code neatly and consistently every time you save is a real bonus for your development process. Now, auto formatting isn't built into Vim as such, so again, we need to use another plugin to achieve this. 
there are a number of different plugins that do formatting in the Vim ecosystem, but the one we're going to look at is NeoFormat. We can look at the NeoFormat GitHub page here. We're going to use NeoFormat because recently Louis Pilfold, the author of Gleam, had Gleam support merged into the plugin. So again, if we want to install it, we're going to look at this fragment of the GitHub URL. We can copy that. We're going to go back to editing our NeoVim config, our init.vim in particular, and we're going to add this line into our config. With that added, we can save it and quit. We can launch it again so that Vim is aware that we want to load that plugin, and then we can run plug install to make sure that plugin is correctly installed. If we load it one last time, we can use the neoformat command to make sure that our code is formatted correctly. In this case, it's already formatted as we'd expect, but if we introduce some strange formatting choices, we can see that when we run neoformat, it's going to set them all back as we would hope. Now again, we don't want to be running neoformat manually as a command every time we want our code formatted. The Gleam formatter runs really quickly, so it'd be nice if this was just run on save. If we want it to run on save, we can have a look at the neoformat readme to see how they suggest configuring this. We can see that further down in the readme, they have this auto command set up. This basically says whenever the buffer's about to be written, I would like to run neoformat and make sure all the changes are executed in one undo group so that they're easy to undo if we want. So we can add this to our setup if we copy and paste this and we go back and edit our FT plugin file like we did before. So we're going to look at config nvim ft plugin gleam. We can paste this in here. We can save this file, restart NeoVim so that that configuration is loaded. Now whenever we save a file, we'll see that the formatting is corrected, as we would hope. Thank you for watching. My thanks go out to Eskimag on the Elixir forum for suggesting this topic, but I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more, and if you have any questions or if there are any topics you'd like me to tackle in future videos, please leave a comment below.